the stars are all billowed and curled. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Jay Dreamers. Thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, it's the second time we've tried it. Sorry about that. All right, cool. Well, hey, um, thanks for joining me. <laughs> I feel repetitive now. Um, I wanted. I'm up late, and I have uh, strange, weird, and fringe topics on my mind. And uh, I've been studying all day and, and making a little study. So I wanted to share it with all of you. Um, we're going to be talking about the fractal verse and how does uh, Whoville and the Grinch Who Stole Christmas relate to the world that we live in today. We're going to get into a lot of different theories and ideas to open our minds and consider the macrocosm above and the microcosm below and where we fit in to those different places. So let's start off things where I like to start things off with Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you guys can hear me, right? <laughs> okay, I hope so. Alice in Wonderland starts off uh, her journey by uh, one of the first creatures that she meets is the caterpillar. And he's seen as like posing a question to her and blowing the smoke in her direction or whatever. But I don't think that's how it went. I think that... That story symbolizes quite a few elements of our own trek and our own journey in this fractal verse that we live in with the microcosm and the macrocosm and these strange creatures that lie therein. Sometimes we can feel awfully gigantic and huge. Sometimes we feel tiny and small like a speck floating in the wind. So here's what I think really happened. Alice met this caterpillar who is actually a, a, probably some kind of phantazoid sitting on top of this huge mushroom-shaped uh, plane of existence. And he doesn't ask her a question. He makes a statement. And he says, Who are you? Who are you? Because Alice is a who. How do we make that connection? Where do we come up with all this crazy nonsense? Let's talk about it. What I'm going to do, what's up to everybody in the chat? I see Stuart Rogers just happened to catch you. Maria Beckos, what's up? I'm going to jump back into the chat. I'm going to do a little presentation for about 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> thanks for letting me know about the volume in the last presentation. Appreciate that. Otherwise, I would have talked forever. All right, so let's jump into this and let's talk about the fractal verse. So what is the fractal verse? What is this cosmology? What is this alternative uh, land that we're starting to see the more we dive into these ancient concepts and combine them with modern ones. Well, let's take a look. Let's go back in time. I'm going to show you uh, this right here on uh, that you're seeing is a synapse. We're going to get to that in a little bit. That's the root of the things that we'll be talking about today. Quite actually, it's the root. All right, let's check it out. So, in order to talk about uh, and understand the larger world, the larger universe, the multiverse, or the multiverse of madness, as it's now being referred to as, probably appropriately enough, let's go back in time. Let me show you what the, some of the ancient people in our world, in recent history, uh, thought about when they drew pictures of our world. Here, we've got, uh, looks like maybe... Uh, an ancient he Hebrew cosmology. So this would be the world. As you can see, there's the vault of heaven, which was always seen as being sort of solid. And then at the top, you have like the throne of God and whatnot. And then you see on the side there, they've got these pillars of the sky. That's interesting. And then the earth in between or in the middle or middle earth, earth in the middle. Underneath the earth or inside of the earth is a cavernous opening called Sheol. And there are pillars supporting the earth, these uh, longer portions of the earth that are connected to the top portion. Now, keep this in mind, but also pay special attention to how it kind of bulges out right here on the side. You see that? And on the other side? I find that to be quite interesting. Here's another one. Here's another one where we got the, uh, the dome above, the stars and the moon on the inside. And then see how it kind of bulges like a bowl? kind of goes upward like that and then back down and inside. Well, that's interesting too. Let's take another look. Uh, this is another this is another example. As you can see there, it has that kind of bowl shape all the way around the edges. Like, like the edges of the world have been turned up and have become mountains to us down here in the tiny. This is the Sumerian cosmology. It's, it's uh, very similar. You've got the mountains all the way around there and then the sky going up. They don't really show you much underneath though. 
this is one of my favorite um, cartoonifications of our local world that we live in. So we've got uh, the Yggdrasil, which is the tree of life, shooting up all the way through the middle, but it continues on. It goes all the way down. Yggdrasil, which pops out at the top of our world, has these roots that go down underneath it and can seem to continue on. It's also surrounded by mountains, creating a little bowl world there. Let's take a look at what else we got. Oh, this these are the nine worlds of uh, the tree of life in Norse mythology, Yggdrasil. There's various ones there. You can just kind of get a feel for it. We're going to come back to that particular image in a bit. All right, so remember, we took a look at this shape, right? Where we have sort of, this would be the world, and it bulges out there on the sides. Let's take a different route. Let's change gears for just a minute. I want to look at the human brain. Instead of looking uh, at the mesocosm, let's dive in and take a look at the microcosm. Let's look on the inside. Because an ancient axiom states, it's always a good idea to know thyself. So in order to know the outside world or the external, it's always good to first look inside, right? You can learn worlds upon worlds by looking within. All right, so we're going to take a look at the human brain. Uh, this, is, this is the control panel for the robot that we call a body. Now, if we take a, a look inside of the human brain and we zoom in, you'll see it starts to look kind of alien. It starts to look kind of strange. You see this little one-eyed purple people eater looking deal down there? That's a neuron, all right? You may have seen many pictures of, uh, of neurons. Usually, they're all connected inside of the brain. There's millions and millions of them, okay? It's a whole universe in there. And um, these are neurons, right? They look very alien. They look like, they actually look a lot like many of the alien creatures that appear in our fiction and our fantasy as the invaders from space with tentacles and one eye symbolism and whatnot, right? Well, all of these neurons are connected to one another. They're not physically connected. They're actually, there's a little space between every neuron that's reaching out to touch uh, the, the neurons nearby. And that's how we think, right? These neurons, uh, they, they're responsible for processing and transferring information in the form of chemicals and, um, and electricity. And that's how we get our thoughts. They run through these um, plasma conduits, as I call them, or they run through these electrical pathways in the brain through the neurons from one to another. But the neurons don't touch in order to communicate. So the neurons themselves use telepathy in order to communicate with one another, which is very interesting, or the transfer of energy or the sharing of energy or electricity or whatever you'd like to call it, right? Now, we're going to dive deeper into the microcosm of the human brain. I just, at least just for a minute, here's Mr. Neuron. Hi, Mr. Neuron. I wish I could make him talk like in Jurassic Park and I could just talk to him. <laughs> Woo! Um, anyways. Yes, here's a neuron. This is what it looks like, okay? this You would see this as being an alien creature if you ever saw this and the sky opened up and you looked at and you saw this. You would just think it was some weird titan alien creature or something, right? Um, let's talk about the elements of the neuron, though. So we've got the soma, which is like the main body, the main portion where all the information is basically stored and kept. Uh, then we've got the little feet, the little tendrils that stick off of the soma part of it. Those are called dendrites. And then we've got this long piece right here that looks like the trunk of a tree. Uh, that's called the ax axum, I think. I don't know. I'll come back to that. Um, and then these down here are the terminals. They're the terminals for the axum. Is it axum? Dang. Let me, let me look it up. I forgot it already. One second. Parts of a neuron. It is the axon. That's what I meant. Ax on, ax off. Ax on, ax off. Just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> All right, where were we? Are we talking about inside the brain? Okay, so in order to know what is out there beyond our world and including our world, the mesocosm, everything that we're used to here in our plane of existence in the realm that we call Earth, there is the microcosm that we're looking at right now in order to better understand 
what lies beyond because it's fractal. When I say fractal, I mean it's all connected. It's a repeating pattern over and over and over. And since I'm stating things sort of absolutely, I just want to preface this with this is all my experience, my perspective, my opinion, etc. Um, and that's it. So I'm just sharing all of that with you. Now let's take a look at this neuron. All right, so down here we have the axon, which is sort of the trunk, and it has these little pods that branch off of it, and these are called um, the axon terminals, like a terminal at a bus station, or a terminal at a train station, or at an airport. Same exact concept. Why is it called that? Because energy, electricity, and chemicals, um, two main chemicals, I think, it, what is it, chloride? Chlorine? No, chloride. I can't remember. Anyways, we'll come back to that. Anyways, these chemicals shoot through this in order to transmit information, data. In order to take data where it's being farmed over here and to shoot it out through this conduit, it comes out at these tendrils called the axon terminals, okay? So it stops at this little bus station and waits for the train to come, symbolically speaking, and when that, when that door opens and the train can go, the train leaves the station. And this axon terminal is connected to a dendrite, which is this over here, from another neuron. And it passes information right along. All right, that's the simplicity of it. I'm sure lots of us heard about this in school but had no idea how it was applicable in real life. <laughs> Unless you're going to be a doctor or an, a brain surgeon or something, right? All right, so here's an example of two neurons right next to each other, trying to shake hands, trying to talk to each other telepathically. Uh, this one has the axon sticking out, and then these are the axon terminals down there at the end. These are the dendrites of the other one. They are transferring energy one to another. When they do this, whenever, whenever one releases energy and the other one receives it, it is called a synapse or a synaptic event. As you can see, there's a gap between the two. If we zoom super far in, there is an event, one might call it. There's an event that happens where the top of this world opens up and, it, and everything gets sucked out of it and everything um, goes out of that world, travels through the space that's in between these two little worlds, and is received onto and into another world, another place, we'll say. Neurotransmitters. Here's another zoomed in version of a synapse. Now, I'm gonna stop screen sharing real quick with that, and we're gonna check out something else here. Oops, did not mean to do that. This one? Boom, okay, yes. All right, there's all the YouTube info if you're interested in that. All right, let's take a look at, uh, no, that's a different study. Let's take a look at this video real quick, okay? So I want to give you this video as an example. Um, these are two neurons barely almost touching one another, and this is a synaptic event. Whenever one really, really, really wants to pass along some information to another one, it opens up all of that information in the form of chemicals and electricity travels from one to another. And the whole purpose behind all of this I'll get to this in a minute. The whole purpose behind all of this is it's a data harvest. It's, a, it's harvesting all this data and then going to get rid of it and, and take it somewhere, basic, basically. Why? Well, in the brain, it's so that you can make a decision. It's, it's really that simple. It's so that you, your brain can decide, should I go left, as I usually do, or should I go right, as I should, right? Um... So these, all of these chemicals that are being stored up within the mind, within your, each one of your brains, um, is, is storing up for this release called an action potential. And basically that means it has the potential, the information carries with it, like it's vital information for a, for a mission that the mind is on, right? It's vital information. And it has the potential to change an outcome outside of the mind, in the physical world, in the outside, in the outer realms or whatnot. Um, so what that means is uh, every single thing that happens, all of that information, however it's stored up, whatever experiences are happening in there on the micro, micro, microcosm are being stored up and they have a purpose. There's purpose behind it. And that purpose is to help out 
a greater entity, which is you. Now, let's talk about depolarization. Whenever these two synapses, whenever these uh, neurons create a synapse and they go through their uh, plasma apocalypse, I'm just going to throw that out there. When they go through their own little uh, cataclysm on the microscopic scale, uh, they, go, they also go through depolarization. Well, what is that? Let's read about it. That's pretty small on the screen, so I'll just read the highlighted portion here. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. In the process of depolarization, the negative, negative, remember that, the negative internal charge of the cell. Now, let's do this just for funsies. Let's replace the word cell with realm because that makes it fun, okay? During the process of depolarization or during the neutral point of the plasma apocalypse, the negative internal charge of the cell or the realm temporarily becomes positive, less negative. Duh. I don't know why they needed to put that. This shift from negative to more positive membrane potential occurs during several processes, including an action potential. Hmm, interesting. So all the positivity is turned on on the inside, electrically speaking. During an action potential, the depolarization is so large that the potential difference across the cell membrane or the, the walls of the realm uh, briefly reverses polarity with the inside of the cell becoming positively charged. I, I, I say that with a smile on my face. It might go over some people's heads and that's totally okay because you got you to gotta digest at your own pace. You know what I mean? Um, but that I found to be of great interest to me, the depolarization. Our world is going to go through a depolarization uh, where the polarity will hit neutral as it shifts. Let's take another look here. Uh, actually, let's do this. I've got uh, my little Photoshop deal set up here. This is a synapse, right? As you can see on the ends... On, these, uh, on the terminal there, I don't know which one is the terminal, whatever, um, they're sort of cup-shaped. They're sort of like, like a little pod or a little flower or a mushroom or you know what I mean? But it's dipping in on the inside. Now, mushrooms have more of a dome, right? However, if this thing right here, over here, is uh, electri electrically magnetized, like I believe that they are, and I'm sure you know, academics would uh, probably agree, if they're electromagnetically magnetized, or whatever, however you say that, right, they would create a confinement dome, which is a magnetic dome right in the middle there, creating the little top to the mushroom, if you get what I'm saying. All right, anyways, so let's do this. Let's take what we just learned of the microcosm, and let's apply these ancient pictures of old cosmologies of our local world and superimpose the two, as I have. Well, here you go. Now, remember how it bulged out on the sides and then went back in like that? Hmm. That's pretty interesting there. Now, let's try a different one. Well, here's another one. It looks, uh, up, it looks like fitting to me, actually. It looks pretty fitting. And this is a synapse. So all we're doing is superimposing these old cosmologies on top of a synapse. Let's just let's pop a few of these on there and see what happens. Because let's say that's not that gigantic. Let's say that there are these little openings that are tiny, which would create tiny little realms all right next to each other. Right? Let's do this. Instead of adding all the little tiny realms, let's check out... Uh, well, this is the Sumerian one. That one's kind of hard to see, but you get the point, right? I love this one. This one fits beautifully. And I love how the tree of life goes right back in like a little root system like it should. Domes out on the top there. Let's check out this next one. Oh, that's right. Remember we were showing you the tree of life? Well, now, having taken a quick little journey, a little detour through the mind of the microcosm, the micro cosmic universe, the microcosmic uh, realm, world, whatever you want to call it, plane of existence, doesn't it kind of remind you of the, uh, the neuron that we just looked at? Let's take a look. Here's the tree. Let's put the neuron on top of that. 
Yes, I would say so. So if, if you were a little speck on the feet of one of these little tiny um, terminals on this neuron, and you looked outward, and you would be able to see these other ones here, possibly. Uh, this one at the very bottom, if you count, there's actually nine terminals there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you could say those are nine little worlds, all right next to each other on a tree, a world tree, a universal tree. So I found that to be very interesting. However, we also, because everything is fractal, everything is related. There is, there is nothing that I've found that is unrelated to anything else. I feel like it's all connected and it's all related. And I especially enjoy those things that are related to us in our movies. This right here is a little clip from The Grinch That Stole Christmas. They show you a, a snowflake and they're zooming into the microscopic portions of the snowflake. And whenever you go down into that snowflake and you zoom in more and more and more... This is the entire environment for the Grinch who stole Christmas. The entire thing takes place on the microscopic world. We have to look way down inside in order to understand the story, in order to follow along. All right, uh, here's another example here. This is uh, another Dr. Seuss one, Horton Hears a Who. And at the very end... If you remember, the Who's live on the tip of this little flower, and they go through their own little plasma apocalypse, and the sky busts open, etc., and they, they reach out, and they zoom all the way out from that flower, and you can see this is their version of space, right? There's other, other life, outer-worldly life, gigantic, uh, so big you couldn't even see it if it was revealed to you. You know what I mean? You would only be able to see locally at, at even the macrocosmic scale. Or would you? Because all we really need to do is look inside, right? Here's a video that I made. Uh, this, this one's about phantasoids and how those otherworldly creatures or alien animals or whatever you want to call them, alien beings, how they get inside of our world. Let me pause this real quick. So, for example, uh, I put the synapse there. There's, there's, uh, there's the synapse of the two neurons almost touching, you see? And then if this is electromagnetic in nature, like I believe that it is, it would create a confinement dome, which is keeping out the electricity that's passing between the two. However, whenever we go through this action potential and we have to make the choice, good or bad, selfish or selfless, well, we need some information, right? We have to recall in our minds and scroll through the Rolodex of our brain, uh, walking through the halls of the libraries of our thoughts. We need to collect that information. Sometimes it's in the form of um, chemicals, sometimes in the form of electricity, like we talked about. Now, let's just say this. Let's suppose for a moment, I like this picture better. Let's suppose for a moment that this right here is our little mushroom-shaped world, that we live on the tip of a flower, like in the movie, Horton Hears a Who, or we live within a uh, snowflake or whatever. I, I believe that those, I, I don't actually think that that's where we live or whatever, um, but those are examples of what life is like. It doesn't end. You keep on zooming in and zooming in. There is no wall that you get to. All you end up is seeing a reflection of yourself and you look down and you see yourself looking down seeing yourself, looking down, seeing yourself. And it continues on and on and on because the code is repetitive. Why? Because there's, there's only one code. There's only one. That's all there can be. There can only be one. All right. So it's, uh, it's like looking into a mirror, basically, right? Where was I going with that? Let me see. Uh, sorry. I lost my train of thought. Um, let's see. I'm pretty excited about this topic. Let's go back to... Oh, that's right. We're talking about the movies. Oh, the homunculus. Okay, let's do that. Let's talk about a homunculus. What is a homunculus? Okay, well, I'm not going to read this to you, but I'm just going to tell you in layman's terms, short and simple. A homunculus is this old uh, vintage sort of concept from, from uh, alchemists. Um, 
I don't know, going back maybe a hundred or more so years ago. Um, the concept has changed in modern times, but in older times, the homunculus was literally a little person, a little human, a little version of a human that lives inside of the human brain, inside of my brain right now. So for example, right now I would have, a, if I had a homunculus inside of my brain, they would be seen. It says here, the assumption here is that, uh, a little man or a homunculus is inside of the brain looking at the movie of what I am experiencing on the outside. Now, let's just say this does create sort of a paradox for academics because they can't resolve the concept because they don't understand connect connectedness, connectiveness. I don't know. They don't understand the law of one, of being one, how all things are connected and that there is no separation and there is no division. It's all an illusion. We're all connected. Everything is all one. Anyways, that's a whole different subject. But let's just assume that homunculi are real, that they're, that they are uh, real beings, that there are tiny little people that live inside of my head right now who are controlling my arms, my inflection of how I'm talking, my enthusiasm, my memories that are working in the background, right? Let's just assume that all of that is real. Now, let me go back to my pictures here. All right. So, we talked about Horton Hears a Who. This speck, as he calls it in the movie, he's looking into it and he can see there's an entire world there. There's an entire uh, cosmos in the speck there. This is an example of the homunculi argument where uh, a little person is in the brain and they're looking through our eyes essentially and sort of working, working things out for us, right? Whatever they are doing on the microcosmic scale impacts us in our daily lives. From the simple and the mundane to the complicated, even more so the complicated, right? Uh, so basically they're in there and whatever their experiences are, whatever choices they make affect our path that we think we're deciding all on our own. Interesting. Whatever they're doing. Now, let's take a step back. We're talking fractally. So there really is no them, there is no whatever they're doing. It's whatever we're doing, isn't it? There's only one code. Whatever we are doing, whatever, whatever information and chemicals and experiences that we're building up, whatever choices we're making, going left or going right, are one day going to be, according to the theory, collected in a great data harvest and sent out in order to, to do, in order to do some greater good, in order to help out a larger being, which is you. So it's uh, beneficial for us to <laughs> make those decisions we would like to help ourselves out with, right? This is another concept of the homunculi. Sometimes it's drawn as like a baby. Uh, modern depictions of a homunculi look ridiculous to me. They have gigantic hands and all of these distorted figures. And it sort of walked away from being a creature or, or a, a human that's a small human that lives inside of the brain. Now it's sort of something else. This is another example of a homunculi in a Disney or a Pixar movie, right? Um, inside out. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but if you look over at these other realms that she's pointing to right now, they are on top of what looks like the axon terminal that I showed you earlier. Remember the little bowl shaped little plate thingies? That's where those things are. And this is inside out. These, these little characters, they collect all these little memories, AKA experiences, right? And they have to put them into the right tubes and stuff to try to help out this greater being, which is this girl's head that they live inside of. Uh, they can go up behind the eyes. They can take a look. They can see what's going on out there. They can see the status and, and help out and stuff. There's an old, uh, I think this is from the 80s, maybe. This was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. Uh, it's called Herman's Head. And these people right here live inside of Herman's head and they're homunculi. They're good examples of homunculi. They're inside there and some of them represent anger and you have to have anger, you know, and anger needs to work his, his issues out or whatever. And then you've got like the funny one and then you've got the smart and the intelligent one, etc. They all have their purpose. They all have their role. They all have a purpose just like you. And then there's another one. Meet Dave with Eddie Murphy, right? He's got all these different homunculi running around in his head, basically controlling them. Same concept. 
Which means brings me to Men in Black. The same idea is seen, but instead of putting it in the person's head, which they do show that in the movie, they put an entire galaxy on on the uh, what do you call that? The collar or whatever of this cat, Orion, and they got the galaxy was on Orion's belt. So here's their fallacy. Here's the, here's where they went wrong. They were looking for this galaxy and in their minds, they weren't thinking fractally. They were just thinking on the mesocosm. They were thinking about their own world and how our world is so big and so gigantic. So a galaxy must be out there somewhere. So they were looking up at the sky, which isn't the right place to look anyway, because you can't see a real galaxy underneath this structure. Uh, so they had to look within to find the galaxy in order to save the world, etc. right? Which is what we have to do too. We have to look within in order to save the galaxy. Uh, here's another one. This one uh, is called Inner Space. This is an, I think this is an 80s movie too. It's a pretty good one. And uh, this guy shrinks himself down. He, he makes this little craft that can go inside of a body. He ends up inside of this other dude's body on accident. So it's a pretty funny movie because he's trying to like, it's basically the magic school bus inside the human body, but it's a movie, right? Um, so he's inside there, and, and when he's going through this dude's body, it looks like space. It looks like something from Isaac Asimov's Fantastic Voyage, where the same concept happens, you see? Right? This is sort of like the space brain, space tentacles, aliens, all that stuff that's portrayed as entering into our world during these apocalyptic cycles. And that would be us, super tiny. We are the Who's. Why are we called the Who's? And I'm just saying it's us. Alice represents us as well. Um, we are the Who's from Whoville. The question is, who are you? The statement is, you are who? <laughs> you are who, right? That's, that's the answer. I know it's kind of paradoxical, but um, it makes perfect sense to me. Here's another little clip from the Fantastic Voyage. There's... I don't know what that is. Some virus or something there in the background. It's probably, or maybe it's a white blood cell and it's attacking their ship or whatever it looks like maybe. And notice this, they are essentially being seen as being in space. Okay. But they're really inside of a body. They're just microscopic and they're wearing scuba gear. They're wearing, they're wearing a uniform that helps you to swim while they are out there in the otherworldly. And here's another example of it. There's many examples of these. I'm sure you guys can pick uh, so many of them on your own because it's shown to us all of the time. Uh, it's shown to us in movies. It's shown to us in books. As you can see, these, these are all related, right? Seemingly totally unrelated things like Isaac Asimov's super old book, some 80s movie, uh, some 90s movie, Men in Black, etc. All these things, even, even real life occurrences, right? They're all connected and we're just starting to tap into that. We're just starting to tap into the connectedness and the oneness of everything. And we're starting to see it, actually. I think a good, a, a, a good starting point, at least for me when I started to recognize it, was when I was watching the Pixar theory, right? There's this theory that all the Pixar kids movies are all really just one story, that they don't end, that they, like it starts over here during this apocalypse, basically. And then it ends over here, which starts over, and it's a big loop, and all the movies are related. And they're like, oh, they did that on purpose, etc. But just like with uh, the MCU or the, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DC Universe, they're starting to do it too. You'll see, you see it with Loki. We talked about that. You'll see it in uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. They're starting to put them together. It's not that they're running out of ideas or anything. Um, I mean, they, they kind of are. But on the other hand, there's something happening worldwide collectively with our collective consciousness. We're picking up on truths and we're sharing them with ourselves to remind ourselves. We've left ourselves these breadcrumbs like in the movies. Pretty soon, all of the movies, there's gonna, they're just going to come out with movies that are saying like, um, it's, it's the multiverse theory. Like every movie is connected. All the Stephen King books are connected. Um, pretty soon it'll be Stephen King, Marvel, Disney, Pixar, history, real life, like newspapers, magazine. It will all be finally seen as being one story, just being told from different perspectives. I'm telling it from here. You're two feet away. You're telling it from there. You're telling a different story, but it's the same story, right? 
Whoo, buddy. Whoo, man. I, I, I was waiting to share this one. I loved it. Oh, man. Hey, today's moving day for me. That's the end of my presentation. I'm going to jump in the chat now. Uh, if you want to get my attention, just type in J or at J Dreamers like Deborah Joy just did. And she says, it's all the same movie, just presented differently. That's right. Totally agree with you. Yeah, I'm moving tomorrow or maybe the next day, the next couple of days. I'm packing up my stuff here at my house, my little apartment that I live in. I'm moving to a different apartment. Whew. So it's, uh, it's kind of like the secret of NIM, moving day for me at least. So, hey, wish me luck. Wish me good vibes. Um, and I'm going to get all set back up. And uh, st I'm going to start once I move into my new place, I'm going to really focus on creating a schedule one for myself so that I can get at all the things done that I want to do, like work on my website for a portion of the day, um, work on writing another book for a portion of the day, work on YouTube stuff for a portion of the day. Um, it is pretty time consuming, but it's totally worth it because I have fun doing it. Um, but then also I want to, I want to create more of a schedule for you guys, for all of you men and women and beautiful people out there. Um, because I know I, I you, you never know when I'm going to do a live stream, right? All right. So let's jump in the chat. We got trust me. Inc says you're driving a wake up revolution. Thank you. It's an honor. Evil wizard <laughs> says, Jay, what do you think of black cube UFOs that are being seen more frequently? Good question. So let's talk about the black cube real quick. I believe that the black cube symbolically, let me just start there, represents our world, represents the earth, right? Out there in the macrocosm is, I believe, brightness and brilliancy and white lights of different shimmering colors. Just like the band, remember, the, and there's the band The Who. I mean, what do you think they're named after, right? They're, they are The Who. Um, and then there's the doors, the doors of the world that open and close. And then there's cream and cream has, has a song that says in the white room with black curtains near the station or whatever, however it goes. Right. Um, the white room is space. If you were to pull the sky apart, which will happen one day, you would see the glory of the heavens. Okay. It's not going to be black and empty or whatever space. Like we probably have more space in our world than space actually has in space. It's probably way more full. Anyways, lots of obstacles up there. What was I talking about? Oh, UFOs, UFOs. Okay. Uh, seeing more frequently. I don't know. I'm not sure about the actual spacecraft, like for aliens and stuff like that. I totally believe in them. Uh, that's more my brother's thing. My brother just started a channel called, uh, straight jacket, white rabbit. And uh, he's going to start talking about stuff like that. So I would hold that one for him. I don't have a lot to offer on that one. Uh, let's see. Who else we got? Nixon now or never says, J Dreamers, I had a dream that Loki was talking to me directly and that he created this matrix in order to avoid the singularity. Well, I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. The, another thing that's that's connected, by the way, are our dreams. All of our dreams, I bet you anything, the more you guys, the more all of you, and when I say guys, I just mean guys and girls, right? Um, but the more all of you, the more we start sharing our dreams, the more you're going to see that we have a lot in common when we're dreaming. Now, why is that blocking me off? I thought I fixed that last time. Let's fix this. Boom. Yes, there we go. That's fine. All right, one sec. I'm just going to scooch that on down. Booyah. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. We got KT Baby who says, I'm so excited for Jay. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. Sasquatch says, I'm on fire. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. Good luck. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Maria, thank you as well. Uh, let's see. We got Ecstatic Existence. I like that. And it's a cool picture too. Uh, you got this, Jay Dreamers. A new home will bring all good, refreshed uh, vibes. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I am the revolution. You are the revolution. That's right. I love that. I love that quote. Lou Key says, Jay Dreamers, I loved hearing what you had to say, man. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Soundgarden, obviously awesome. Uh, Meanie Mouse says, Jay, I've been having a lot of dreams about the plasma event. I had subscribed to you a year ago, but never actually made it the time to watch. Um, I started watching after these past few dreams that, that, that they've had, Whew, man, just like I was saying, like, we're going to all start seeing that 
if we see our dreams as like Pixar movies, you would be able to fit them all together. Just like they do in Time Machine, right? If you've ever seen that movie Time Machine um, by H.G. Wells, I think, right? Or there's a movie based on the book by H.G. Wells. Um, in the, In the future, this guy goes way into the future and there's like only young people basically. And there's a whole reason for that, I believe. Um, and there's these Morlocks that live underground or whatever. But uh, all these human people that that live on the surface, they all they all have the same dream every night, and they start dreaming of this place that um, you're not supposed to go to or whatever that leads inside of the earth. I kid you not. Interesting. Nixon now and forever says Loki's symbol is the serpent. Very nice. Right on. Sweet. Beat wizard. We got evil wizard and beat wizard. <laughs> Uh, let's see. J Dreamers, one of the only voices I can listen to on YouTube. Not many have a good voice. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. I don't have to say that. Thank you. That's great to hear. <clears throat> I was trying, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Uh, yesterday, last night or whenever, hello, future people. Uh, when I was doing my video yesterday and I was reading the book, the smoky God, oh my God, like I've never, I have not held an accent for that long. And my accent, my accent was wavering all over the spectrum. <laughs> like sometimes it was Gaelic, sometimes it was English, sometimes it was Russian, sometimes it was Czech. You know, I had all kinds of accents going on. It was crazy for the same person. <laughs> Sand was here, says, Jay, you're a great storyteller. I love the commitment to the character voices. Right on. Thank you. Deborah Joy says, I can't wait until this goes down. I can't wait to meet you all. Jay Dreamers, I love you all. Oh, that's very kind. Uh, Vanessa, for, Vanessa VA says, J dreamers, do you ever experience sleep paralysis that leads into a lucid dream? Uh, yes, I have actually quite a few times. I'm not a big fan of that. It freaks me out. I don't like it. <laughs> I like lucid dreaming, but I don't have to have sleep paralysis in order to lucid dream. I've created all like whole cities and stuff in my dreams purposefully knowing that I was sleep, knowing that I was dreaming. Right. Which is one of the reasons why, you know, I, I created this name, this new name for myself. Miss Doll D, hey! Says, Jay Dreamers, I wish you the best. Good luck. Aw, thank you. Super appreciate it. Uh, let's see, we got Seeking Yeshua. Hey, it's good to see you again. Says, uh, Jay, so interesting that you mentioned dreams. I researched your video from last night and I read, I read along with the book. Then I dreamt about it. Then later last night, I dreamed that I was telling you. And here you are telling me who bum 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 <laughs> it's all fractal i love it it's it, i love it you can see the signs you can read the signs i feel like i'm talking like christopher walken all of a sudden uh, you can you can see the signs they're all there i don't know <laughs> uh let's see bryant grazier grazier says jay dreamers this goes with your last this goes with your last video the movie at the top of the world the movie at the top of the world? I don't know. I'm forgetful. Sometimes I forget my own stuff that I upload. All right. Uh, let's see. Was that it? Anybody else? I know we're doing kind of a late one. And you know what I realized? When I took a poll asking what, when the best time to do my live streams was, I posted the poll when I'm usually awake and up, like right now. So around like 11 o'clock at night, I asked everyone like, hey, when do you like me to do my live streams? Ultimately, I'm going to do them which works best for me, the times that work best for me. Um, I, I've tried to do morning ones and stuff only because I've, I've seen that there's viewers in Australia and New Zealand and England and Germany and one in China, believe it or not, there's one. <laughs> um, and I, I feel for them. Like I, I want to hang out with them too. So I tried, I try to do earlier ones, but the reality is I'm a night person. And as you can see by my energy, I feel better at, during this time of, of uh, the, during this time. All right. Uh, let's see. We got Jason Enriquez who says, I love the reading of the Smoky God. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Bryant Grazier says the island at the top of the world. Yes. I remember. I don't, I don't remember what that video was about though. I mean, the North Pole, I was talking about the North Pole. Oh, speaking of the North Pole, I just finished um, a brand new web page on my website um, dedicated to the North Pole and talking more about that. The one I'm working on now is the Plasma Volcano. 
I'm excited about that. A uh, guy sitting into computer says, JDreamers, do you think astrological signs slash archetypes have merit in this reality? Yes, I think everything has merit, i.e. a cancer being more likely to have a healing spirit. Yeah, I believe in all that. I believe in everything, every single thing. I might not agree with everything, and I'm and there might be there might be more to the story, but I I believe in everything. There's more to more to me, more than meets the eye, like uh, Transformers. Agent Benzo, hey, that's kind. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okaturaku says, J Dreamers, for the past few years, I've had issues with lucid dreaming. As soon as I realize I'm dreaming, I start waking up. It's like I'm being kicked off of the dream. I'm glad you said that because that's happened to me and I've actually practiced keeping that from happening. Let me give you a tip that worked for me uh, because what would happen in my mind, I'm dreaming, doing whatever. When I start to realize, oh damn, I'm dreaming, right? Everything starts to starts to kind of fade away like in, in the movie Inception, right? When she messes up and she's, she loses focus. So in order to keep that dream going, what I did is I... Um, created a partition in my dream. Okay. What I mean by that is I kept in mind that I was dreaming, but I really started to try to focus on different elements of the dream, right? Um, instead of thinking about like, oh, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. The more you start thinking about I'm dreaming, the more you're your body wants to wake up. Your body wants to dream. Your soul is dreaming. You want to dream. So dream. You know what I mean? Keep it in mind, like, hey, this is all a dream, but go have fun with the dream. Go go experience it, you know what I mean? Instead of freaking out. That's what I did, at least. It started to work for me. Travis says, Jay, you rock. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Travis. Anthony Michael Kerr says, Jay, I'm praying for you and your kids. Thank you. Super appreciate it. I hope the new crib is a good environment for you and your little man. Much love past heaven. Uh, oh, and I get paid tomorrow, so I'll send you some cash. Oh, right on. Well, hey, thank you. Thank you. Super appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That's all I will say about that. Uh, dude, the thunder was loud. What thunder? I don't know. Gina Genesis. Oh, Gina, I totally got your email that you sent. Thank you. I super appreciate it. Uh, I've just been busy with all kinds of different things. Um, but I just want to tell you, since you took the time to write, thank you. It totally made my night and my day. Uh, Gina says that the time lord of past and future happenings is you, J Dreamers. <laughs> hey, did you ever see that video I did where I was, I, I actually, um, I did a whole video about time lords and I made it so that I actually arrived in the TARDIS. It's, it's one of my favorite special effects I've ever done. Uh, let's see, we got Hannah Walker. Hey, what's up, Hannah? Who says, Jay, the intro you showed of Horton zooms in on their world and it has four islands oh you're right you're totally right i noticed that i forgot to mention that it has four islands on its north pole just like on our old maps good one hey let me actually let's let's check that out i want to show that real quick you're totally right mm, where is it for pow let's go back a bit let's check that out thank you hannah appreciate it all right i'm going to bring my screen sharing back up here Boom. All right, so this is from the movie Horton. Here's a who, and here is their North Pole that, that she is talking about, right? Remember this this person is like uh, trying to yell or whatever, and they send up the whole plasma apocalypse deal. This is just like our North Pole on the North Pole maps where the, you've got the four rivers or whatever and Mount Maru in the center. Good catch, Hannah. Good catch. I totally forgot to mention that. All right, let me get out of that. Boom. All right, so let me jump back in the chat here. We got Overlord. Oh, wait, where'd it go? Yeah, Overlord. Says, what's up? What's up, Overlord? Good to see you again. Gina's also a night person. Cynthia Avalos says, I love this channel. Oh, well, thank you. That's very kind. I also love this channel. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm into my own videos. Like, I don't mean to sound super narcissistic or anything, but hey, guess what? Um, I think it... it See, I don't know. I don't like the word narcissism because like, I feel like it carries too much of a, a negative vibe. There's a good thing to looking at yourself and wondering about yourself and being proud of yourself and happy with yourself and your life and being content and, and acknowledging these things about yourself. It's okay. Uh, let's see. Maria says, fractal verse makes the most sense. What else? What else? 
Oh, we got Supreme Kefas, who says, Jay, you should do it whenever you feel like it. Your energy is worth the randomness. Oh, good. Right on. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, yes, that's that's awesome. Uh, let's see. We got Morris. What's up, Morris? Says, Jay, how often do you get deja vu? Oh, my God. Often. Very often. I love it, though. I love it. Um, I lived in a constant state of deja vu since I was 10. Oh, pff, wow. Well, there's a little tiny part of me that's kind of jelly right now because I love deja vu. Um, that man, there's so many good there's so many good theories about deja vu. One of my favorite ones, obviously, when they change something in the Matrix, is one. And that's a possibility. Um, but another one is that maybe your consciousness or our my consciousness. I'll just speak from first person. Maybe my consciousness or my spirit or my aura or whatever it is perceives what is happening and it's out of sync with like my brain and my body. So it's a possibility that one scientifically, it could be that we're actually experiencing things beforehand. And so whenever we experience, whenever those signals get up there to our brain and our neurons, like we were talking about, right. And then those pictures flash in front of the, the movie of our mind that we're like, Hey, I've seen this before. Yes. Because we're a step ahead. We're slightly ahead. Uh, what reason are we slightly ahead, right? But then there's also some other um, there's also some other theories that I like too. Sand was here says, uh, Jay, can you please give your thoughts on Stephen King's The Dark Tower series? If you're familiar with it, that is. I like that you put that in there because I'm not. <laughs> I've always wanted to read that series. Um, whenever I finished reading my favorite book series of all time, which is called The Sword of Truth series, somebody told me that I should try out the dark tower series next because it's it's very similar how they're all connected and there's all these interconnected stories and stuff the dark tower series has come up many times in my research so sometimes i feel like i have read a book because it's come up so much that i'm very acquainted with sort of the gist of it right but i do want to i do want to read that series and i will one day i plan to sheepdog 22 what is up i haven't seen you in a while good to see you nazim huger says, I take honor in tooting my own horn. <laughs> Good. Great. Grand. Wonderful. I love it. All right. Anything else for me? Anything else in the chat? Anybody have any questions? Any comments? Anything? Otherwise, we will probably say I do. Thanks, Evolution. Super appreciate it. Garden Telepathy says, seeing Kubrick's fractals. Yeah, you know, Kubrick's or uh, yours or mine. Ours, right? All right. Well, I think that's good enough for tonight. Um, nice, short, sweet presentation. Oh, we got Zoe Williams. I knew it. I knew the second I started to say wrap things up. Uh, Zoe says, Jay Dreamers, I'm a night person now. It's 4.44 a.m. in the UK time, Jay. Uh, just give me a deja vu moment talking about the North Pole page on his website. Wow, how cool. Oh my God, I can't wait. Okay, I love the North Pole one that I made, but I'm so excited to do this this uh, this plasma volcano page too. I, I'm and, and then as I'm working, I've got so many other ideas for so many other pages. It's basically my book come to life. So I highly recommend checking out my website. Uh, and if you do, there's a little chat for members so you can reach out to me. Many people are like, uh, have, have asked me constantly, how do I contact you? How do I talk to you, right? Because I can't respond to a million comments. Uh, you can join my website and you can talk directly to me. Please keep in mind, I'm not going to talk with you all day long, okay? Like, I, I have a life, I have a son, I have things that I need to do. However, I do jump on there every day. And like I said, I'm going to work on a schedule so that I can give you guys a, a better expectation of, of knowing when you can sort of catch me, right? Anyways, uh, oh, wow, everyone's talking in the chat now. Okay, ok Okaturaku says, J Dreamers, I have this theory that we are all already dead. Okay. And we are repeating our life. That's why we experience deja vu and future sight. Okay. Hey, I'm on board with that. I'm, I, I believe in everything. So I'm not going to say I don't believe in death. I believe that there's truth to that. I'll say. Southern Mediator says, Hi, J Dreamers. I remembered when I was about three and looking at another toddler and we were both wondering how we got in the bodies that we were in, knowing that we were somewhere else before. I believe you. I totally believe you. Um, because I've also had similar thoughts like that. I mean, I have those thoughts now. I try to keep that childlike innocence and 
wide eyes when I look at life and the world and everything. Though I myself get caught up in the drama from time to time. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Jema, what's up? You're super welcome. Logan says, J Dreamers, when the dome breaks, do you think the pressure will be that bad for seven to ten days? Uh, it's the pressure differential. There will be no pressure, essentially. No pressure. Hey, it's just the apocalypse. No pressure. <laughs> Love it. Escape from Babylon says, good stuff. Thank you, thank you. Lou Key says, good night, good night, good night. M. Muse says, J Dreamers, have you heard about the plasma moon map? Yes, I have. Totally have. Oh, thanks, Gina. Logan Boyd says, J Dreamers, I feel like people are going to panic. So, okay, okay. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, no offense. Uh, don't say the V word. <laughs> I cracked myself up. All right. I think it's a good time for me to take off. Hey, thank you so much. I love you guys. I love spending time with you. I mean, I, I, I got to stop my day and I got to hang out with all of you beautiful people. And then I get to hang out with all of you carrying on wave after wave into the future because not everyone watches the live stream. So for all of you who are watching in the future, thank you. It's good to spend some time with you. Thanks for walking the path with me for a bit. Until next time, I'm Jay Dreamer saying good vibes and goodbye. I'll try so hard to fade away.